This is a bipolar junction current mirror and the current through the load over here is determined by this program resistor. This program resistor determines the current, the collector current through this transistor here and in doing that this collector current is mirrored over here. So you can control the, the current through this load by adjusting the value of this resistor right here. Now this part of the circuit here is also a constant current source. So it's an independent current source, meaning that changes in this resistance here, changes in the load resistance, will not change the current through this part of the circuit provided that the current falls within a certain range and the voltage drop across this transistor falls within a certain range. And that's called a compliance range. And that range is determined by the circuit's ability and these transistors' abilities to stay within their linear operating region. Now what is uh, the use of a current mirror? It becomes useful in integrated circuit applications where it's important that you have multiple areas of an amplifier that have available the same biasing current. In audio amplifiers it's also important to have that ability. Uh, uh, there are multiple uses of current mirrors, uh, particularly with integrated circuits. And another aspect of a current mirror that's important is that both of these transistors here should be at the same temperature and stay at the same temperature. So they should be very closely thermally coupled, which is not hard to do in an integrated circuit provided that they are in close proximity. And another aspect of um, that is important in a current mirror is that the transistors are matched in terms of their characteristics. Their gain and uh, the um, base to emitter junction voltage should be very, very close together. And again, as, uh, in an integrated circuit, that's not hard to accomplish. Um, at a discrete level like this, it's much more difficult to accomplish. So what I did here was I found a couple of NPN transistors um, by going through a bin and finding two that had a their, to where their beta was very, very close. By doing that, their uh, base to emitter junction voltage was also very close. So it's very difficult at uh, the discrete level to construct a current mirror that has good performance, primarily because it's, it's hard to find two transistors um, separately that are, that are suitably matched. So what I did was I took the two, the two transistors that I found in this bin here, and um, I actually took the two flat sides and um, used silicone grease to thermally couple them. And then I aligned them and put a drop of epoxy on top so that they stayed physically in close proximity. So that's what this is here. So this is our current mirror. We have, this is our program resistor. Essentially, the program resistor is this here. This is the actual schematic for it. This right here comprises the program resistor. And the reason I've got this is so that we have this R1 here to limit the current. So we don't end up turning this potentiometer all the way to zero and then burning out this transistor's uh, base to emitter junction. So that's a current limiting resistor there. So as we adjust this here, these LEDs, you can see they're getting brighter and dimmer by adjusting this. And what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the current through this transistor and that transistor over here is really, really close to the current. The collector current through this transistor is very, very close to the current collector current through this transistor, and these LEDs are correspondingly uh, have delivered through them that, that amount of current. Now, I can omit two of these LEDs if I want to and just have one in the circuit, and it will not change appreciably the amount of current that's flowing through it because this is also a constant current source. In fact, I can actually take all these LEDs out and just short this collector 
to VCC and we're not really shorting it because it's a constant current source and you're still going to have the same amount of current flowing through here essentially as we do through there. If you want to build this circuit, I'm going to, I recommend that you have a minimum level of breadboarding equipment. You can find that list at breadboardcircuits.com. Three general purpose LEDs, a quarter watt resistor kit. You can also find it at breadboardcircuits.com. For this particular circuit, you're going to need two 2N3904 transistors, which are very, very easy to get. They're, they're quite popular and readily available. Yeah, the ones you're going to need are going to be matched for this particular circuit. Matched meaning that the gain of each transistor is going to be essentially the same. And uh, in order to, to determine that, you're going to need a multimeter that has the ability to test the beta of transistors. So not necessarily an easy task if you're just um, wanting to build this one circuit, but if you want to get into breadboarding, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a multimeter that could do that. Uh, but for this particular circuit, you will need two transistors that are very closely matched and a 10K potentiometer. This is the breadboarder circuit. You've got the three LEDs right there. Um, and I'm going to show you a schematic after this. This is your potentiometer. This is your R1. This is the two transistors. They don't look like this when you buy them, but what I did was I thermally coupled them by using silicone grease and connecting the flat sides together and putting a drop of epoxy on top. And that's what you need to do in order to thermally couple these two transistors. This is a schematic right here. And these schematic references are on this breadboard here. So this is how the bipolar junction transistor current mirror works. You've got two transistors that are matched both in terms of their gain or beta and in their base two emitter junction voltage. That's very important because if you had one of these transistors at a lower base two emitter junction voltage, then more current is going to flow through that base two emitter junction. You're going to want the base current for both these transistors to be the same. So you have your IRP, which is your program resistor current. That is split off at this branch here. You've got current flowing this way. You've got IB1 and IB2. Both of these currents should be the same. So you can just call this 2IB. So it splits off between 2IB and IC1. So IRP is equal to IC1 plus 2IB. If you replace IB by 1 by IC, divided by beta, because this transistor is operating in its linear operating region, the collector current divided by the beta should be equal to the base current. So that then gives you IRP is equal to IC plus 2IC over beta. If you factor out the IC, that gives you IRP is equal to IC times 1 plus 2 over beta. If you divide both sides by IC, then that will give you IC, will give you IRP in terms of, will give you a ratio of IRP to IC2 because IC2 is also equal to IC. This collector current should be equal to this collector current here. So if you divide both sides by IC or IC2, it gives you one, gives you IRP divided by IC2 is equal to one plus two over beta. Taking the reciprocal of that gives you IC2, the ratio of IC2 to IRP. And that is what you can call your current transfer ratio, the ratio of IC2 divided by IRP. If you want to find IC2 in terms of IRP, then you can just multiply both sides by IRP, and that gives you IC2 is the IRP divided by 1 plus 2 over beta. That's how you can find IC2. This is also a constant current source here, as mentioned before. And the reason is that this is maintained at 0.7 volts. If this stays at 0.7 volts here, then this current will stay the same. This current here will stay the same. If this current stays the same, this current stays the same. If IB2 stays the same, then IC2, IC2 will stay the same. Because this current here is based on the the base current multiplied times beta. 
it would be maintained at that current. What will happen though is if you decrease this resistance, you'll have more current flowing through here. And so what this will do is this will this transistor will exhibit a larger voltage drop, thereby reducing the voltage drop across this resistor, causing less less current to flow until it, it matches the amount of current that is dictated by IRP here. Now about this here, uh, IC2 is going to be pretty well close to IRP. It's actually IC2 is equal to IC1, but IC2 is going to be really close to IRP if you have a very large beta. So if you have a beta of say 100, then this is going to be really close to IRP divided by 1. So for all practical purposes, IC2 and IRP, well, they're pretty close. So we're going to do a demonstration here, and we're just going to check the current through here, through this branch, and compare it to through this branch here. We're not going to be able to break into this because that'll actually change the, the uh, characteristics of the circuit. So we're just going to check the current here versus this and uh, do a demonstration based on that. This is a quick demonstration of the circuit here. We've got two ammeters, one here that is placed between VCC and this current path here, and another ammeter here which is placed between VCC and Q2. So this will be the current through the program resistor, and this one will show the current through Q2, which is going to be the mirrored current. Right now I've got I've got this potentiometer set so that one milliamp flows through the program resistor. Again, this is a program resistor here, this combination of R1 and this potentiometer here. So if I go ahead and complete this circuit, you see we've got about one milliamp. We've got one milliamp over here going through these LEDs, so that's right on target. If I adjust this, down this program resistor, 0.76 milliamps. We've got 0.76 milliamps going through the through the load. And if I increase it, you can see it correspondingly increases. Now this is also a constant current source, so that changing the load voltage will not change the current. So if I change the load voltage here. Right now this load voltage is based on three LEDs. So if I go ahead and just activate one LED, I'll, basically I'm shorting out, I'm bringing the ammeter down here, down to the top of this LED right here, and we still have about one milliamp. So this is a, this is a constant current source as well. And I can even short that LED out, I can, or I can even short this uh, collector to VCC, I'm not really shorting it because the tra this transistor is going to respond by increasing its voltage drop, but I can connect this directly to VCC and we still got about one milliamp. So this is working really well and not bad for uh, two transistors that were taken out of a bin and matched up uh, and thermally coupled. Well, you can actually get a, a, an 8-pin dip which contains two matched transistors that are matched both in their gain and in terms of their their base to emitter voltage, and they can you can get those to where that base to emitter voltage is matched down to a couple of millivolts, which is really really good, and so that you could make a very very precise current mirror by using you know a package such as that. So that's how the circuit works, and that's a simple NPN bipolar transistor current mirror. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.